Welcome to the first ever edition of the Byram Hills Blitz. I'm Matthew Levy, along with my co-host, Jesse Smalls. Jesse, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. Excited to get started. So today on the show, we're going to go through a recap with some basketball, hockey, and wrestling. We also have interviews from star varsity basketball players, Maggie Walsh and Mike Callian, and then we're going to transition to some spring sports. So first, we're going to talk about the boys' wrestling team this year. Uh, Just to give you a little recap, there is a Valhalla, Westlake, Byram, and Briarcliff make up one team. They were 5-3 and this year, and some stars that we would like to note. Uh, Six kids qualified for sectionals, so John Anthony, Matt DeLuca, Alex Bihar, Jacob Petflied, and both John and Justin Fortuna. Alex Bihar, John Fortuno, and Justin Fortuno made the all-section team, and then John Fortuno and Alex Bihar went to states. So, with all those players being said, who do you think was the most key player for Bayern this year? Um, I would definitely give that to Alex Bihar. Um, Just his leadership on and off the court. Um, has been amazing to see, and I've seen him off the court, and um, I have watched some of his matches online. Uh, They are impressive to see, and the way he leads that team is definitely something that I feel like the younger players are going to want to embody. Um, And another one is John Fortuno, because you can't not mention the other player who has made states. Um, And being a smaller frame than Alex Bihart definitely um, inspires the ones that definitely have the strength, but not exactly... Uh, the same size as Alex Bihar, um, but definitely can still be a leader and it can show um, that he made states just like Bihar. Yeah. And now to hockey, uh, we would like to highlight the Pink the Rink game that I went to in Brewster. Uh, this year we had a special player on the hockey team, Ethan Bihar, brother of Alex Bihar, who was a star in wrestling. Ethan Bihar scored the mo- most, go- most goals as a Byram Hills be- uh, hockey player. What do you think of that That accomplishment? That's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, that's incredible, especially at the end of the season um, where everything was heating up and that team needed that extra push, that extra um, thing to look forward to was definitely something that the team um, will remember forever, um, and especially him and his family. It's definitely a big accomplishment. And now let's transition to some girls varsity basketball. Yeah, um, they just had an incredible season. They totally turned the program around from going to a losing record four seasons ago and last season only losing two games was definitely exciting for the whole program and the whole district, something that uh, everyone really liked. And what, what made this team special? I think the leadership of Maggie Walsh. I yeah. think she was so key for, that, for, their, for their success. They had such a young talent with Jennifer Moy, Olivia Pika, Gabby Ripka, Beth Corelli. There's just so much young talent. She was able to galvanize them and lead them to have such a great year and win that league title. Yeah, and speaking of the league title, they definitely, that was a big accomplishment for them, but only in the second round, they lost to Somers, which was definitely a shocker for everyone since they did so well in the regular season. What can they improve upon from that in the next season? I think with losing your star player in Maggie Walsh, it's going to be a tough transition for them, but they have such great talent as those wings I just talked about. I think if they come together as a group and someone steps up as that leader, I think they can be as good and better next yeah. year. And now, we're going to see an interview with star varsity basketball player, Maggie Walsh. So thank you, Maggie, for being here. How would you classify your basketball career? It's, it's been challenging at times just because um, the outcome of our season was not always what we had hoped it would be. Um, but this year was definitely rewarding in the fact that we won our league championship and we still have so many young girls for this program to continue. and. Um, eighth graders are now allowed on JV, so the program is like changing in a completely different direction. So I think this point of our, our, my career at least, was, was the highlight for me. When someone says the name Maggie Walsh, what do you want them to say? I want them to say that she was an incredible leader. Um, I try to be an inspiration to younger players and um, really, really show that like if you work hard, like things can you can succeed at things. Um, and the personal achievements were really were really great, but um, the overall team achievement of winning that league title was extremely rewarding because the team put in so much hard work for it. So to all those younger players that look up to you, what advice would you give to them? I definitely would tell them to 
keep working hard. Uh, things may seem like they're not paying off at the time, but eventually they will. And if you continue to keep having that drive to succeed and keep working hard and, and looking out for everyone else and being a good person, that I think they, you will succeed and you will get that recognition. And this year the team really took off. What do you think was one key to that success? I definitely think the selflessness of the team was key to that success because we were all willing to make that extra pass for the person who had the open shot or, or take a charge for the team to not let the person score. Um, so I think just everyone willing to like step in for the other person and take on like a different role and not just boost up their stats was really beneficial this year. And throughout your whole five years here, is there one moment you cherish the most? Probably winning that league title this year, just because we haven't done it in so long and the program has not been so good in the past, but this year, like completely changing everything to win that title was really exciting and something I won't forget. And it was on senior night, so it was also more special. And being that you, were, you are a five-year varsity athlete, how did you balance the school, the work, all that other outside stuff in your life? How did you balance this with basketball? It definitely was difficult at times just because it's high school and there's a lot of work that you have to get done with extracurriculars and social things. Um, but having my teammates go through the same thing uh, was also beneficial just because they were, they were going through it and we could do it together. We could stay after school and do work or or like go out somewhere together. Um, but also I think just because I made the sacrifice to put so much effort into this that I, I knew that it was gonna be my life and I decided like, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to go to certain things because I wanna focus on basketball and go away for tournaments. Um, so I knew what I was getting myself into. Um, so it was, it was totally like rewarding in the end, but it was definitely difficult to make that decision in the beginning. And to conclude this interview, what athlete do you look up to? Who do you try to um, embody as an athlete? I look up to Brianna Stewart. She's an incredible player and she's overcome um, so many struggles in her life. And she, on the basketball court, she's, she can do everything. She can defend, she can dribble, she can shoot. She really can do it all, and she's an outstanding role model, so I try to embody her in my playing and personality-wise. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Maggie. Good luck to you thank over your you. next four years. And now let's transition to some boys' varsity basketball. They went 17-5 and five this year, but had a tough loss to Rye. What do you think was the key to that success this year? The intimidation factor that they've had throughout the whole season has just been remarkable to watch, and all the talent they have and all the height they have um, has definitely been a problem for a lot of teams. Teams have been watching a lot of film, and they're definitely a team to watch out for in the future because of this. And now, since they've lost uh, star players, like the, uh, we, we will see Matt Callion on an interview later. Uh, we'll see Ben Leff and Willie Sampson, who do you, and Mike Caparelli, of course. Who do you think will step up and be that leader for next year? I think Matteo Sainen. Um, I think he's been overlooked. Uh, these past few years because of not having that much playing time, but towards the end of the season he has been getting uh, more playing time and also uh, having that pressure on him that he's the brother of Skylar Simon who's been a star of the Byron Hills Bobcats forever uh, is definitely pressure that I think he can take advantage of and use it as motivation um, and he really does have a lot of talent that hasn't been seen yet and will really show this season. And now let's see an interview of Mike Callian. Thank you so much for being here, Mike. Uh, when we watch you play, when we announce these basketball games, we see your toughness, that mentality, that heart that you play with. Where do you get that from? I mean, just from a young age, my dad ingraining inside me from him coaching my soccer games, coaching my basketball games, teaching me not to take anything for granted, to give me life lessons that I always hated listening to, but it's paying off in sports, clearly. And um, just watching the older students play on the soccer team and the basketball team from my freshman year, watching how, like, Every season come to an end, maybe not how they want it to end, seeing them cry, learning from their mistakes to hopefully not make them myself and just not taking anything for granted because it's the biggest thing I took away from it all. So like, speaking of all the sports you play, which one is your favorite? Which one stands out to you the most? I mean, it's, they're all different type of experience. So like being on the field, it's 11 guys. It's a 
like a slower paced game. Not, there's not there's a time where not everyone is running, and but the, being able to score like for example a header to give you a detailed like like experience, right. to like bring the team to a sectional finals game and just like running towards the fans to go. I don't even know what was going through my head at the moment and just seeing just a blur of green and just hearing like Let, let's go Bobcats or whatever they were saying to like locking in like late quarter like late fourth quarter on defense and just hearing only the chance like really fast paced game basketball they're, I mean they're different experiences but I like I probably like them both the same and you have ended now your four year career at Byram Hills with the Byram Hills basketball team how would you rate this year's success compared to the others I mean the basketball team's success I was never a part of a team that won uh, a banner that we were so so called for going for I mean league titles like winning them all four years of high school in, in both sports I mean it's an accomplishment that gets overlooked because of how prestigious our like program is, but I mean I think no matter what like even if we, we lost in the quarters I think this year last year like maybe the year before I wasn't on the team, but um just taking it away just or you're one step closer to that not happening again so like Sam Goldman being on the team for four years like just like I said I learned from the older guys he's definitely learned from the older guys and he's hopefully gonna be that kid next year and lead that team to a to a chip. So with the achievements you were talking about um, of getting those league titles. Uh, who, what advice would you give to the younger players who are looking to get more of those titles? I mean, like same thing my dad had, had told me from a young age. Like I, I coach my younger brother in CYO too. I try to do the same thing with him. Just don't take it, don't take anything for granted. Give it your all. Like, the heart that you say I play with, I try to make everyone play with. Like, just what makes you a great player is bringing us everyone else around you like up and being a good player is only focusing on yourself. So just try to be that great player and go the extra step. And now you have talked about all these older kids that. That have influenced you. Which is the most that have have had a like impact on you? I mean, I'd probably have to say Dylan Friedman, to be honest. Not like being a pretty athletic kid for his size, but maybe not, not the most skilled. And like he only played basketball, so one toward athlete. But still, just he's that kid that was always on the floor. The fifty fifty balls, Coach Reaper talks about. He was one that always come up with it. Toughest kid I've ever met. I mean, at rebound machine. And he's, he's he's small too. Like kind of like Lou Filipelli. I never got to play with him, but. Just a little tank, just every mm -hmm. always coming down with the ball, just influencing influencing everyone else, like making passes, like big shots when you wouldn't think he'd hit them. So transitioning from basketball, because um, the season is over and you're playing lacrosse for the first year, what made you uh, play lacrosse as well? I mean, just coming down, actually, like like being subbed off at that Rye game, just knowing that my basketball career is probably going to come to an end for my entire life, and like maybe pick up games here and there, but nothing like what I've been a part of for the past four years. And just saying that, I mean, I'm just thinking, what sport can I play at this point? Like, I just need to be a part of a Byron Hills team. Like, I don't know what my life could be like without that. So just hearing there's no, there's gonna be no tryouts in lacrosse, to be honest, like, like it was kind of the make or break for me to just join that team. I'm doing okay for someone who's never played before, but I'm just taking it one step at a time with that. And now our last question. We ask every athlete this. Who is your favorite athlete? Who is the one that you most embody? I mean, it's a pretty interesting answer, but um, I'd have to say Jimmy Butler plays in the NBA. He's on the 76ers, and the reason I say that is because he's he's not really the most he's a really skilled player, but not the most skilled. He's not the toughest, the fastest, but he's definitely one of the harder hardest working. And coming from someone who's been homeless, I think I don't know what age he was, but he was homeless at a point in time in his life, and just clearly not taking anything for granted. Definitely giving his his all, his heart, working his his hardest in everything, and just coming up to the National Basketball Association, like playing at the highest level of basketball, it's just something to look up to. All right, thank you, Mike. And now we're gonna to transition to our spring sports preview. So boys lacrosse, what can we expect from that? So I think our star goalie in Griffin Rackauer, he is a terrific talent. He's, go he's committed to the University of Princeton. So a great leader, great in the classroom. And also we've got uh, Ben Mautner and Will Mikituk. They're just great players at the midfield and attack positions. And this year, led by Coach Michael Johnson, he's trying to bring that winning culture that we wanted, that winning environment. And they're looking for like an ex a successful year to bounce back from that last year loss. And I think another key player that we want to mention is Jake Stumacher, a great defender. And now let's transition to some girls lacrosse. So uh, they really had a great season last year uh, with a record of 14-2. and two. And some of their star players, like Lindsey Grada and Callie Hoffman, uh, definitely have to be leaders for this team, uh, Lindsay being a senior and Callie being a junior. Um, definitely can be a, uh, it can be a really leadership factor having those people on your team can definitely be something to look out for. And now transitioning to boys baseball, uh, what can you expect out of them this year? Let's start with Carson Fry. He's a great pitcher. He's going to be that ace of the team. He'll be a rotation. He'll be that rotation stud and he'll try to lead young guys like Ben Gordon, like uh, Jared Cohen, 
like Bobby Shacoin and like uh, Nick Skyra. Yeah. And we're going to see Matt Nichols and Garrett Bocal lead the team that year. And after last year's sectional heartbreak, and they had a lot of seniors last year, they've lost eight. Yeah. How do they respond? They, they believe, they believe as a team, they will be completely fine. They'll be great this year and re- hope for that bounce back season. And they're led by coach Scott Saunders. We hope to have him as an inter- on the uh, set one day. And now let's transition to some boys tennis. Yeah, uh, they also have a big season um, coming up this year with a new JV coach, uh, Coach Hicks. Uh, but Racanelli is returning for his second year. Um, being on tennis for two years, what, what are you looking out for them? Who are those star players that can uh, transform this team into a, into a powerhouse? First, I would like to talk about Sam Averman. He was, a, he was double partners with Nolan Sanders. Nolan Sanders as well is terrific. But Averman can play both singles and doubles. I think he's very good. He's improved a lot over the offseason. And another player that we need to watch out for is freshman Ryan Bernstein. He was an eighth grader who made varsity last year, but unfortunately was hurt. Now he's back. I expect a huge season from him. And now let's some, recap some seniors. Shea Gordon coming in. He was, he's been everywhere in this school. He was on football. He was in the play. And now he's playing some tennis. And then also we're going to see uh, that dynamic duo that we, love, we know and love, Robbie Waxman and Evan Miller at the doubles tandem. And then one more player, a junior, Bailey Go- uh, sophomore Bailey Goldstein, used to be in our grade. Bailey Goldstein, I think he's going to have a terrific year as well. He played with Max Hammond in doubles last year. Can't wait to see what he brings to the table this year. And now to end it off with some softball. Yeah, so a great place to end off with such a young team. It's a totally new team. They've gained, gained 12 new players this year. Um, and they did not have the best year. Uh, last year with being under 500, but they do have a lot of uh, fight. Um, I was talking to someone, Sofia G. Martino, a junior, and she was telling me how they just have a lot of good practice techniques, and every day in practice they do uh, 110%, and that could really be uh, the factor for them to do a lot better this year. Thank you for watching the first episode of the Byron Blitz. Uh, Jesse, what a great show we've had today. Yeah. I hope you check out our future episodes that we will be having. I hope we can bring on some players or coaches like Saunders or maybe some star uh, baseball, lacrosse, or softball players and or tennis players, of course. And thank you guys for watching.